Hello, we are here today at Spyglass Ridge Winery where Rod Bauer of Ohm Sound and Production is production manager for all the shows that they do here, right? Yeah. Yes. And he has a wonderful sound company. He likes to specialize in spiritual sound when he has a chance to do so. Spiritual yes. festivals such as? Uh, I did Love Light Festival last year, uh, Three Days of Light. I was involved with Evolve Fest, mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah, I'd like to do a lot more. Yeah, so this is the very first of our Conscious Interview series, so today we're starting with Rod, and what I am going to do is close my eyes and kind of connect in with my higher conscious self, and we're going to do the interview from that place, okay? Great. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Ashtokurudayata Kaliapokurudaya Shiva Karana Kalahira Karamata Hirataya Hi Rod. Hi. In today's moments of peace, love, joy, truth, and understanding, are you aware that your conscious self is coming forth as the divine you that you are? Yes. And are you aware that your higher consciousness self is accessing all of the consciousness within you in this moment? Yes. And we're here to be the divine beings of love and light consciousness that we came here to be. Yes. Yes. So as we're sitting here together and we access this moment of truth, this moment of wonderment and this moment of joy, are you fulfilled in your longing on this earth plane? Um, I'm fulfilled in a lot of ways, yes. Have you found your purpose or your soul's purpose at this point in time? I think... Um, the sound company really f hits me deep. I feel really good when I am able to uh, create an environment where someone can have an experience that is able to allow the artist on stage to touch someone and I've allowed the um, avenue for that to happen. Do you feel that your understanding up until this point in time has allowed you to access your inner self and as you access your inner self you're allowing that consciousness to come forth from what's happening on stage? Uh, yeah, when it's the right environment I do feel that. Okay. Yeah. And does a musician access that consciousness within themselves when they're performing? Do you feel that? I think I feel that too, yes. Okay. So what is your job? What is your role in this play of consciousness becoming uh, a wild abandonment, right? On a beautiful stage with a crowd right. of people. What is your role? Well, my role is to, I think, to provide the equipment and the space, but doing it in a love and conscious way. I mean, someone might have a beautiful field and a space, but they don't have the equipment or things to do it. So I am I want to be able to bring the beautiful stage, the lighting and the sounds to create the environment. But it's more than that because I think I also bring the energy of who I am to the space um, and to allow that to be happened in a creative space. You know, as myself, I want to be a kind, loving, gentle person in life in general. And so when I'm uh, setting up the environment for this, I want to carry that same energy throughout the festival doing my, I mean, it's a job, but it's not, you know, once I, I really enjoy it, I don't see it as a job. So it's really, I want to bring that energy of the calm space, loving, you know, where the, comf the artists are comfortable on stage. It's a safe environment for the people to come and they feel that from what I'm bringing to. And do you feel that your life is about this work at this time? Do you feel that you've come here to do this work? Have you opened yourself up in such a way that you've consciously connected with your inner self to know this is the work that I came here to do at this time? Yeah, I, I think it is because I've been doing a lot of personal growth over the last 10 years, really going within and finding who I am. And, um, you know, I've done different jobs and different things throughout, but there's something about the sound um, you know, you can talk about frequencies and sound and there's just something about music touches people in a deep way. And so I have that same connection. So 
um, it's interesting, but there's there's not a lot of Scion guys up there that have this conscious, I mean, maybe they do, I shouldn't say that, but I just bring a conscious level from that I want it to be good. I don't want it to hurt people's ears. I want them to come and experience and, and have that experience go deep within so they're able to touch the consciousness within themselves. If I'm, and, and there's no distractions. I want to create an environment where there's no distractions, where someone can just have an experience deep within themselves and touch that consciousness within themselves. And do you feel that your work is important in the world? I think it's really important. I mean, I hear so many stories about festivals or there's problems or a bad sound or this, you know, things going wrong or, you know, or someone getting upset or the, the guy was a real jerk because I asked him to do one thing. And I was like, wow, I just, you know, I just want to be, um, I just want to make it go smooth. And, you, so. and do you feel that the smoothness is created by the energy in the space? It is, and it's it's interesting because um, there's different gigs that affect me, and there's different times where I can I can feel the stress coming on within me about something or some problem or something I forgot, and I can always take a minute and go in within that calmness within me, and then I'll I'll be like um, the universe or Ma or God. I'll say, please, I, I surrender this gig to you. I surrender this time to you. I surrender this this event to you. And so um, it's very interesting how things can calmly settle down and then things can um, open right up. And I'm actually getting teared up because um, I'm thinking of so many experiences where uh, I would just let it go and hand it over to the universe and it would just, it just unfolds beautifully. And um, it's, it's really powerful to see that experience happen. Um, so I really try to be conscious about everything that I'm doing. So we're alive in this moment of consciousness, and as we're alive in this moment of consciousness, we allow that to reveal itself in every moment, right? Yes. So each moment provides a new moment for us to be conscious. And as we're doing our work in this world, as you're so beautifully doing your work in this world, we find that each moment will reveal itself to us, will open itself up to us. So right. how do you feel about that opening of consciousness within your life at this time? Is it opening up for you in a beautiful way? It's, it's really opening up. And I think what's interesting is that when, if, you, if you're able to touch something within you that um, you know, I mean, use the word purpose, like, is this my purpose? That when you allow that purpose to flow, you can really see the beauty of things around you and how those things open up more and more. So when you find that thing that is, it, that is your purpose from a conscious place, it's really interesting to kind of just watch the wave and watch it unfold. And really it's more about getting out of the way staying focused on that purpose, but then really being humble and grateful for the beauty that it, that it creates along the way. And the beauty is you, is it not? Yeah. So we create our beauty from within our own beings, and you've created this wonderful sound company called Ohm Sound in Production. And where did your name come from? Was it an inspiration from the great sound of God's grace? Well, it's, I mean, Ohm, you know, and from a Electronic, you can say it's Ohm, O-H-M, but it's it's not that Ohm. It's the Ohm of the universe. That's the sound. I mean, Ohm can be traced to the. It's the sound of God in the universe. So, to me, that sound uh, that I'm trying to create on stage or whatever is is coming from the inspiration of the consciousness within me. You know, I'm trusting that the adjustments that I'm making are from me just relaxing into who I am and allowing it to flow through me. Mm. So. so the consciousness flows through us, allows us to be who we are, and allows us to exemplify our work in the world. Is your work concerning you at all at this time, or is it opening up in new ways that are bringing new life into you? Well, um, you know, it's probably, I've been doing sound for probably 15 years, and it's only a couple years ago that I really really started to project and think, okay, this is what I really want to do. I, it feels right. And 
Um, this year, I've got over almost 50% more gigs than I've ever done. So it's uh, amazing how many gigs are opening up and the flow is really well. Um, so I'm, I'm seeing too that I, I'm really not, I, I don't think I went into this like as a money thing, like I, I wanna make money at this. I went into it because it feels right. And what's interesting is that as the gigs open up, the, the money is flowing with it and it supported me along the way and it's allowing me to get some new gear now and so it's it just it just keeps expanding and the expansion is you isn't it the expansion I think is is really coming from me it's, it's coming from me seeing the vision seeing the vision keep growing seeing it growing from a conscious place and then all of a sudden you know things are happening I'm getting ready to finish building my stage this winter and um, I have a new mixer coming soon. Can you tell us about your stage? What is the dream of um, the stage? Because I know you've been dreaming of the stage for quite some time and is it manifesting and it, how did you manifest it? How did you bring it into this production stage? Um, it's it's going to be a mobile stage because I get a lot of events that are in a field or someone's yard or maybe there's a it's a beautiful campground but there is no stage area with it so I actually bought an old camper trailer and we've been building the stage on that and it's also what I use to haul the roof and stage together and so um, we're going to be ordering the stage deck soon to uh, make a permanent stage with drop down sides that'll be 32 by 23 deep and it seems to be a really ideal size especially for like Kirtan um, with Kirtan, there's, it's a very community type singing is the best way I can put it. You know, my, I, I get it all the time where I'll have, uh, it's a three piece band, but by the time I'm done, there's 15 people on stage and I have nine vocal mics that I'm trying to figure out how to plug them all in. <laughs> so it's a community of Kirtan. Yes. It? So it's, it's very, um, it's, it's inspiring and it's fun. Um, I, I love uh, mixing more and more inputs so you know more instruments more percussion more singers it's it's a lot of fun to make it all blend together what would you say is your biggest dream to come in this business that you created for yourself um, I would say just to be able to um, do this like at least all summer all along, I mean, wherever we end up landing, all along the East Coast, to be able to just roll in and provide it easily and effortlessly and have people help me set it up is always nice. And just provide a conscious environment for people to have, you know, there's a real movement and people wanting to go deeper and go within themselves. And there's a lot of festivals that are, can be um, normal or just not so conscious, but there's more and more people realizing like, no, there's something that I want to go deeper. So the more conscious festivals I get involved in is the more of the purpose. But, you know, someone might just have the land and I can say, okay, I have everything to bring. Um, and I even do vendor power, um, where if you have vendors that set up, I can provide power for all them besides the stage and the lighting and the and the sound so and do you feel that your life is opening up to receive the kindness the generosity that's coming towards you at this point in time because you have a lot of wonderful things coming for you right yeah within this realm of work do you feel that you're open to receive all of that um i am i'm really open up because the more i see it it I, the more i see it opening up the more i realize like in myself i want to keep opening up and opening up so you know, sometimes I say, well, you know, um, that I get really tired and I've done so many gigs in a row and I go, oh, maybe I should say no. But really, I don't, I'm, I've just been opening it up more and more and gone no. And sometimes I think I can't do it all, but it always unfolds. It always works out. And so I'm really trying to focus on staying open to whatever, you know, is going to continue to keep opening up. And do you feel that your life right now is ready to receive that energy it is ready right yes, so, yes. Oh, right so accepting that energy into our life is so important isn't it it's true because you know 
it, it's a struggle sometimes between thinking about, okay, I ha is this a business or is this my purpose? And you have to make these th work. And so sometimes I take on some gigs that aren't the most conscious gigs. But it's interesting because partway through the gig, I go like, wow, I really, I really want to get to the place now where I'm, I can do all conscious gigs. Like I can just feel the difference there. It's not a bad thing, but it's not, the, the, it's not a deep place. I'm not touched within myself at some of those events. So it's, as it continues to grow, it's interesting that um, I know that the more conscious gigs are going to continue to open. And it's the more that I allow that within me and let go any connections that I think I need to do with some of these other gigs, I, I realize that it's not necessary, that I just need to let it go and continue to trust and to continue to open and continue to be grateful. Yeah, gratitude, right? So we're grateful for everything that's coming to us. Yeah. So if you accepted yourself as the divine one that you are, and you accepted the work that's coming to you, right, as the divine work that is your purpose on this earth at this time, what would it be that you would say to others to open themselves up to that divine purpose, to that divine work, to that divine understanding? How have you consciously come to this place? And how would you guide someone else to come to this place? Um, uh, the first, the first word that comes is let it go, um, trust, and really, it's just trying to not be in your head, stay out of your mind. So many times we, we get inspired for something, or we have that mountaintop experience, and we go, yes, I'm going to do this, and then three days later, our, our mind has completely beat us down and told us every reason we can't. And I think the real focus is just, you know not so much blocking it like you're trying to force something back but just always sitting when something comes up that's blocking you or stopping you just take a minute to sit sit on the chair sit on the floor to sit and go let me go back to that place again and you know remember what i'm doing or remember how that feels or remember what that purpose was and then watch how the train will start moving again and you're right back on track again and things start opening up again so i think the hardest part is staying out of our head and so you can see and feel the difference when you're in a divine place from when you're kind of in a thinking chaotic place oh yeah and definitely. you see things opening up more easily so that's a good guidance isn't it to say well when things are opening up when things feel like they're coming into play then you're probably on the right track right, right. yeah okay yeah it's that it, I mean, the feeling is so, the more we can be in touch with our feelings, the more we can recognize when we're, when it feels right, then go ahead and do that. Because there's, there's some gigs that I almost did, and I might have do, done them for the best reasons. They might have been okay gigs, but then something in me said, it just doesn't feel right. And so for whatever reason I didn't do them and, and it's funny because it always seems like oh yeah something didn't happen or that guy didn't get paid or or it got rained out and the guy lost got damaged equipment or you know there's things that are just I just have to trust that, that feeling goes you know wait hold up don't do that one you know something's kind of weird yeah so so you're a divine being of love and light and you've come here with a purpose is it beautiful yes and kind and loving and yes. generous so we're offering ourselves, we're offering our graces, we're offering our truth, because that's why we're all here. I love you. Thank you for this interview. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for doing your work. Thank you for being an example for everyone in the world. Show them. Yes, you can do your work. Yes, you can do what you came yeah. here to do. Yes, you can live your purpose, right? You can be a divine example of light for all those around you, for everyone in your yes. environment, for everyone who has a purpose. We all have something we came here to do. It's there interesting. A, There's something that just popped in my head, too, that I wanted to say, too, that, um, and that would be always listen, because I remember someone made a comment to me one time, and I wasn't really aware at the time, but it's always stuck in my head, and I was... I was mixing a band, it wasn't even a conscious festival, but I was mixing a band and um, um, i trying to remember how it's worded. Someone walked up to me and they said, they go, wow, you're really in your element, aren't you? And I recognized later that there was, 
And there was a definite joy within me in that moment of what I was doing. And so I didn't realize that was very much at the beginning of, of my path on this production company. So um, my advice would be too, is if you're thinking about it and you're, and you're kind of on it, someone may notice within you from an outside perspective, the joy that you're having, but you might not be really noticing it within yourself. And that was a key point to me to recognize, oh wait, they're right. I really am in my element. It, this does really feel right. Mm -hmm. So it became aware to me to keep focusing on that part of it. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for talking. Thank you for sharing. Is there anything else you'd like people to know about you? Where can we reach you? How can we find you? What if we want to bring you into one of our events? How um, do we do that? I have a Facebook page. My website right now we're redoing. Um, but do you have an address that will be available soon? I have an address that will be soon. It's ohmsoundandproduction.com. Okay. Um, it'll be available soon. We're redesigning the site. and. Um, Kai's and my site were kind of together. We're creating two separate sites. And I'm also on Facebook, um, ohmsoundandproduction.com on Facebook. Okay. So, so they can reach you through either of those means. What can, about, do you have an email I have, address? I have an email address of rbsoundguy at gmail.com. So it's rb as in Rod Bauer, soundguy, S-O-U-N-D-G-U-I at gmail.com. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you, Rod. Thank you. You're a wonderful man. <laughs> we appreciate your work. And I cry a lot. <laughs> Opening up to the divine. Yes. Thank you. Jamal. Jamal. <laughs>